Welcome to episode 173 of EDH Commander Challenge. I'm your host, BT. And just as you saw it, there's the championship title that will represent the winner of next week's finals, featuring Emma versus Hexproof Anarchist with his deck played by Jimmy. Also, a quick message to my patrons. Remember to send me your addresses via email as I have some lovely foil cards to send to each of you. Thank you for making our episodes each and every week possible. We couldn't do it without you. But for today, we have another match featuring some Strixhaven content. So let's get into it and check out those opening hands. First, in this corner, with an opening hand of a forest, Yavi Maya Coast, Uvenwald Hydra, Matter Reflection, Coastal Piracy, Empowered Auto Generator, Zimone Quandrix Prodigy, and his Simic Style General Adrix and Nev Twin Casters, he is the Infinite Combo Fiend. This is Mark. Next, in this corner, with an opening hand of Temple of Epiphany, Memorial to Genius, Baral Chief of Compliance, Wave Break Hippocomp, Fiery Encore, Surge to Victory, Reinterpret, and his Idid Style General Zafai Thunder Conductor, he is the unpredictable Jimmy. Mark on the dice would have started us off, so let's begin this Strixhaven card fight. For their first turns, Mark plays a forest, while Jimmy plays Temple of Epiphany tapped, keeping the scryed card on top. Mark plays Yavi Maya Coast and casts Zimone Quandrix Prodigy, taking one damage from the coast, while Jimmy plays Memorial to Genius tapped. Mark plays Thespian Stage and moves into combat and pokes Jimmy for one with Zimone and passes. During the end step, Jimmy cycles Lonely Sandbar to draw a card. Jimmy is mana short here, but at least casts Is It Signet. But before he passes, Mark turns his Thespian stage into a copy of Jimmy's Memorial to Genius. Mark moves right into combat on his turn and pokes Jimmy again for one damage. Then in his second main phase, he casts Celestia Eulogist before passing. For Jimmy's turn, he casts Baral Chief of Compliance and passes still being mana short. Mark seems to be in the same boat here, making me wonder how many lands are in both their decks. So he moves right into combat again and attacks Jimmy with both of his creatures. Jimmy declares no blocks and takes 4 damage before Mark passes. For Jimmy's turn, he STILL hasn't drawn a land and instead casts the pretty cool Wave Break Hippo Comp and passes. During the end step, Mark turns his stage into a copy of his Yavi Maya Coast. Mark plays Reliquary Tower and casts this sad robot, Solemn Simulacrum. And with its ETB, he gets a net tapped island from his deck, making Jimmy pretty jealous. Then he moves into combat and attacks with his Eulogist. Jimmy chooses not to block it and takes the three damage before Mark passes. Jimmy finally gets a new land in an island, making him super happy and then he finally casts his general, Zephyr, and passes. For Mark's turn, he decides to stay on the ramp plan and casts Empowered Auto Generator, and passes. Jimmy, finally ready to show off the power of his deck, casts Fiery Encore. As he casts this spell, his general lets him scry one, which he chooses to bottom the card, then he gets to rummage, discarding and then drawing. The card he discards is Dig Through Time in this case, 
and thus he deals 8 damage to the Eulogus, destroying it. Also thanks to Zaphi's other effect, Jimmy gains a 4-4 blue and red elemental creature token before passing. Mark plays a forest, then taps his generator, which puts a counter on it, and he gets a green mana from it to help cast Uvenwald Hydra. With its ETB, he nets from his deck a tapped Simic Growth Chamber, which has him return a forest to his hand, and he passes. Jimmy simply draws and passes. During his end step, however, Mark uses Zimone's effect to place the forest from his hand back into play tapped. Mark taps his generator, placing another counter on it, and gaining two mana to help cast Mana Reflection. But Jimmy isn't having that and casts Traumatic Visions, countering the spell. Jimmy hits the value train upon doing this as thanks to his general, he gets to scry one, leaving the card on top, he gains another elemental token, his hippo comp lets him draw a card, and his baral lets him loot. Mark then casts his general, Adrix and Nev, and passes the turn from here. Jimmy plays his own copy of Reliquary Tower and casts Gilded Lotus and passes. Mark plays an island, then taps his generator, placing a third counter on it and gaining three mana, which helps him cast Terastodon. In response, Jimmy casts Mana Leak, hoping to counter it, but Mark has more than enough mana to be able to pay the three. This does trigger Zephy and the Hippo Comp, however, allowing Jimmy to scry one, which keeps the card on top, and then draws it. But now, Terastodon's ETB happens, and Mark chooses to destroy both of Jimmy's artifacts and one of his own forests, granting both players two 3-3 Elephant tokens, because Jimmy lost two permanents, and Mark's general grants him double the tokens whenever he would make some. It's really ironic when you think about it. Then, Mark passes. Jimmy plays a tapped Myriad Landscape and passes, having lost half his mana sources. Mark plays Alchemist Refuge and decides to sit back and pass. For Jimmy's turn, he casts Mindstone and passes. During his end step, as Mark has 8 lands in play, he uses Zimone's other ability to draw 2 cards. Then he taps his generator, placing a 4th counter on it and gaining 4 mana to help cast an overloaded Cyclonic Rift to bounce all Jimmy's non-land permanents. Jimmy is ready, however, and casts Reinterpret to counter the spell. This also triggers Jimmy's General and Brawl. Thus Jimmy gets to scry one, which he keeps the card on top, and then loots before passing the turn. Mark plays a forest, then he taps his generator, placing his fifth counter on it, and gaining five green mana to help cast Seasons Past which basically in this case returns all cards in his graveyard back to his hand, much to Jimmy's horror. Seasons Pass then placed on the bottom of Mark's deck. Then Mark says take two and action and cast yet another overloaded Cyclonic Rift and this time succeeds in bouncing all of Jimmy's non-land permanents and removes his tokens before he ever gets to use them. Mark then moves into combat and attacks Jimmy with his Hydra, Terastodon, and Elephant tokens to deal him a grand total of 24 damage before finally passing the turn. Now near defenseless, Jimmy recasts Brawl and passes. During the end step, Mark uses Zimone to play a forest from his hand into play tapped. 
Mark wastes no time going into combat and attacks Jimmy with the same creatures as last turn. Jimmy's saving grace is casting Aether Spouts. Via its effects, Mark chooses to place his attacking creatures on the top of his deck. Then in his second main phase, he taps his generator for the 6 counter and 6 mana to recast Mana Reflection, doubling his mana and passing the turn. Jimmy plays a tapped Forgotten Cave and knows that next turn Tarasodon will be back to destroy his lands and he needs to try something new to stay in the game and thus cast the ironically named card Surge to Victory. Looking to get in some value from the spells in his graveyard. But Mark, like a lion who's finished playing with his food, casts his favorite counter spell in the game, Mystic Snake, to snuff out Jimmy's last hope. At this point, Jimmy decides to scoop it up, as with his limited mana versus Mark's overwhelming doubled mana, it'd only be a matter of time before Mark would take the win. This was a fun game to watch. Even with both players having a slow start, both these decks are value trains, especially Jimmy's deck. Zafai, when combined with cards like Baral or the Hippo Comp, allowed Jimmy to get future knowledge for his draws very often and a lot of draw power. If he had more brutal counter spells like Force of Will or Pact of Negation, I think he would have been able to stabilize and begin to chip away at Mark. However, Mark played a near flawless game here. He wasn't hasty and waited for the perfect opportunity to make that one game-changing play. And that was with Seasons Pass. After forcing Jimmy to counter the initial overloaded Cyclonic Rift, his resources were all exhausted. And that left Mark a big opportunity when he had tons of mana to be able to not only cast the Seasons Pass, and take away basically all the effort that Jimmy had placed on his previous counter spells before it, but then being able to rift a second time and bounce all of Jimmy's permanents in that same turn, well, once that happened, Mark knew that his victory was inevitable. Do you with our picks? Let us know in the comments down below. Also, if you enjoy our content, consider becoming a patron. Give you access to playing in our future tournaments, bonus entries into giveaways, your name in our EDHCC club at the end of each episode, and so much more. That's it for this week. Until next time, stay warm, stay safe, and keep on, keep on card gaming. Cheers, everyone. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this week's episode. If you're a fan of EDH gameplay and you like whether it be 1v1 or multiplayer and you want to be part of the ever-growing Command Your Challenge family, just make sure you smash the subscribe button and notification bell down below. We do weekly videos. Don't forget as well to like, comment, share our videos, but most importantly, enjoy them. On behalf of all of our members here, I'm your host BT. Feel free to check out all of the videos in the channel. Join our game. It's now your turn. Cheers.